If we bring ourselves back to the home screen, we're going to walk through how to run basic calculations in ERA. By viewing the summary grid, we can click on whichever sub-operation we're interested in analyzing. For this example, we're going to look into drilling 12 and a quarter inch hole. So I'll do a double left click on the sub-op drill, which will bring me to this screen. And the uh, initial screen involves four plots in the driller's view format. We know that we're in the driller's view because this highlighted box is lined up with the D for driller's view. And if you recall again, S stands for snapshot and G stands for gauge. Right now we're looking at the tension that's in the string versus bit depth, the tension that's at the surface versus bit depth as we drill this interval, the torque at surface as we drill this interval, the ECD as the PWD would see it, and the standpipe pressure or surface pump pressure. The little radio buttons uh, in the lower portion of the screen indicate what sort of sensitivity analysis is being conducted. And right now I'm doing a sensitivity analysis to friction factor. Since ECD and pump pressure are not sensitive to friction factor, we don't see but one single calculated curve, this middle curve. Now if I want to change some of the input parameters, let's say that I plan to rotary drill with 150 RPM as opposed to 60 RPM, typing in this box and hitting enter will automatically change the calculation, and you'll notice that it didn't change the results much. So this is for a rotary drilling simulation. If I wanted to simulate slide drilling, I would need to tell the system that I'm not rotating, so my rotary speed would be zero. And I would need to apply some weight on bit. Now this weight on bit is actual downhole weight at the bit, not surface weight on bit. So let's say that I'm applying 5,000 pounds weight on bit downhole. What the hook load plot is indicating is what the surface hook load would be reading with 5,000 pounds weight on bit at surface. Now for a sensitivity analysis to wait on bit, I could click on this radio button, which will bring up a variety of different weights on bit, actually all the way down to zero weight on bit. The dark blue curve is a simulation of zero weight on bit, and then in 5,000 pound increments, we move to the left. The dark shaded region indicates where some point in the string we become helically buckled. And if I pull up this graph by double clicking on it, you can see in the legend, uh, this is the helical buckling limit in black. And I can remove any of these plots if I want by clicking on, of course, the limit tab and turning uh, any selected limit on or off. A few of the sorts of calculations that come up quite often when we're performing a drilling operation, well, we often are interested in what sort of ECD load we can expect. ECD in certain hole sections may be sensitive to flow rate or rate of penetration or rheology. And so right now I'm going to shift my focus by clicking on the two for two plots and then cycling over to the ECD and pump pressure graphs. And right now you can see the mud weight in pink, the yellow and the green are indications of my collapse limitations. If you recall when we input that into the earth builder and then the teal curve is my calculated line for um, weight on bit sensitivity, which doesn't mean a lot right now. But if I was to shift focus to rate of penetration sensitivity, I now have five curves with 150 foot an hour being the base case value, 50 foot an hour being my lowest rate of penetration, and 250 foot an hour being the high side case. You can see that we are quite sensitive to rate of penetration. If I was to change over to flow rate, for example, we would see that I don't have much sensitivity uh, from an ECD standpoint to flow rate, but my standpipe pressure is highly sensitive to flow rate. And that is, of course, because of the frictional pressure losses down the inside of the drill pipe. Now, men as long as we're mentioning this pump pressure plot, uh, I'll draw your attention to the upper left-hand corner where we have a button called Rig Options. And if you click on Rig Options, this is where we can bring up what sort of lines we want displayed that indicate the limits of our equipment. Right now, there are no pump liners selected, but if I wanted to show the pump pressure limit for, say, six and a half inch liners, by clicking on this box, now a green shaded area will appear on the standby pressure plot, which indicates the maximum pressure that six and a half inch liners 
can manage by this vertical green line. Now you'll notice that the vertical green line becomes diagonal at uh, approximately 7,000 feet. And that diagonal line is an indication of uh, the pump's flow rate limit. Because the, the brown curve is 950 gallons a minute and the purple curve represents 1,000 gallons a minute, the pumps must have a flow rate limitation of somewhere around uh, 980 gallons per minute because this diagonal line will represent the maximum flow rate for the maximum strokes per minute that we've assumed for the pump. Once we reach the depth where pressure becomes the limitation, a vertical line is drawn. And you'll notice when we click on Rig Options and we pull up smaller liners, they have a lower flow rate limitation, but a much higher pressure limitation. And we can just barely start to see the pressure limitation appear for the 6-inch liners as we get deeper. Six and a half. Another, another type of plot that we're often very interested in is sensitivity to rheology. And by clicking on this radio button, you'll notice that we pull up sensitivity to rheology in 10% increments, meaning that the base rheology, 600 RPM reading of 60, 300 RPM reading of 40, and so on and so forth, is increased by 10%. All, that, all rheology values are increased by 10% and 20% and likewise decreased by 10% and 20% to reveal sensitivity to those rheological properties. And in this particular case, I'm just as sensitive to rheology as I am rate of penetration when I drill 12 and a quarter inch hole. Now, if we continue to cycle forward on the plots, I'd like to zoom out and we'll pull up a couple of additional plots that will become of interest later. Rate of penetration is a graph that will indicate the ROP that we've assumed. You notice 150 foot an hour, but it will also reveal the rate of penetration when we turn on our ROP model and have the ROP be a calculation rather than an input. Likewise, the torque at bit is a vertical line at 5,000 pounds, TOB stands for torque on bit, or it will be a calculated value if we turn on predict the predictive ROP algorithm. And of course, the predictive ROP algorithm is under calculation options. If we click on that option, it will pull up the opportunity to click predictive ROP. And now all of a sudden, ROP is no longer an input, but rather a calculated value. If we click on reactive torque, reactive torque will be calculated rather than an input value. Because our confined compressive strength is increasing with depth, the bit does not generate as much torque as we get deeper, nor do we drill as fast as we get deeper. But I'm going to turn off the reactive torque and predictive ROP features and draw your attention to the last graph, which is the maximum weight on bit plot. And the maximum weight on bit plot will reveal where we become helically buckled somewhere in the string. The black shaded area is an indication of when the bit is at a particular depth, what is the maximum weight on bit that can be applied before some portion of the string becomes buckled. Of course, identifying where in the string becomes buckled requires use of the snapshot plot. So if we click on S for snapshot, it will pull up a series of snapshot plots. And the tension snapshot is the one of interest, which right now is a weight on bit sensitivity plot. And I really need to increase this to 15,000 pounds so that we have something that's meaningful. 15,000 pounds is my base case, and I'm increasing weight on bit by 10, in 10,000 pound increments, 10,000 pounds higher and lower. And really, that would make more sense if I was increasing and decreasing in 5,000 pound increments so that I don't end up with negative weight on bit. Now, if I lock the axis and drag the drill string up the hole, it will give me a picture of how the behavior changes as the string drills forward and moves down the well bore. And you can see that some places in the well are more susceptible to buckling than others, which is why when we were looking at the driller's view, max weight on bit plot, we had some kind of stair-stepped character. 
and at a shallow depth of 6,000 feet, we can't apply as much weight as we can when we're a little bit deeper. The fortunate uh, aspect of the dog legs that are in the hole are increasing my buckling resistance and then decreasing the buckling resistance when I have drop sections. If I go back to the snapshot plots, zoom out to the four plot view. As we cycle through, of course, we have the standard torque snapshot. If I'm rotary drilling, if I turn this on, there's my 80 RPM, 150 foot an hour, weight on bit sensitivity. Friction factor sensitivity would certainly be a more common way to view this. ECD, friction pressure. Now, the friction pressure and total pressure plots uh, give me absolute pressure as opposed to, in ECD terms, what the losses are in the system. So the friction pressure here, we start at the flow line at surface, move down the annulus. There's not much frictional pressure loss in the annulus. There's a lot of friction lost in the BHA, so we make this big jump across the BHA and then start moving up the inside of the drill string. And you notice the transition point where I go from 5 inch to 5 and a half drill pipe. There's not as rapid pressure loss through that part of the string. Now that plot becomes more meaningful when I do a flow rate sensitivity. And with sensitivity to flow rate, I can start to see how much pressure is uh, being consumed through the inside of the drill string. Total pressure simply adds back in the hydrostatic weight of the mud that's in the hole. And then uh, the next plot, if we cycle forward, the annular velocity, velocity of the mud moving up the string in feet per minute. Uh, of course, we have critical thresholds, bayerite sag, poor hole cleaning, and then uh, ideal hole cleaning in green. Side forces in the string. One of my favorite things to do is a weight on bit sensitivity for side force and lock the axis and then drag the string up and down the hole. And we can see how the side forces change as we move up and down. If I unlock the axis, one thing that I glossed over was the twist in the string. Of course, the twist is more meaningful when we have a friction factor sensitivity. If we go back to weight on bit sensitivity and cycle forward a little further. We have standoff plots. The first one is absolute standoff in inches. How close does the string get to the low side of the hole? The black dotted line represents the standoff at the point where the pipe touches the hole. So this would be the tool joint. Standoff at the tool joint. Notice the tool joints are larger here across the five and a half drill pipe. And then the curve represents the standoff mid-span in between those touch points. If the standoff becomes zero, then that means the tube itself is actually touching the hole. Relative stand, standoff puts things in terms of how close uh, is the pipe to being centered. 100% would represent centered in the hole, and 0% would mean the pipe is touching the low side. The tube is touching the low side. Next plot is VME, Vine Macy's equivalent, relative to the yield strength of the material with and without the design factor applied. The black line in the dark shaded area is the yield strength of the pipe, and the gray line is with a 1.2 design factor applied. And the last graph is the bending stress in the string. Again, sensitivity to weight on bit. And as we move the bit up the hole, we'll start to see changes to the bending stress as there's less tension in that part of the well bore. Gauge view plots are slightly different than the drill view and snapshot view. What we're doing is fixing a gauge to some place in the well and analyzing what the load is as the string progresses through the operation. So as I move the bit up and down, you'll notice that the graph is a horizontal gray line drawn indicating that, uh, reminding us where the bit is located and what the load is when the bit is at that particular depth. So right now the dip the bit is at a depth of uh, 10,000 feet, but we're looking at the loads felt at a depth of 5,000 feet. So at the previous casing shoe, what is the tension in the pipe? What is the torque in the pipe? What is the ECD in the hole? What are the side forces, et cetera? So this is how we run our drilling calculations in ERA.